Welcome, welcome. My name is Noctigal, and today I want to further explore possibilities for the future of the Ahsoka show, as well as for several of the primary characters within the series. So, to start off, while Balin is a beloved character to many fans watching the show, he was criminally underused in the Ahsoka finale, getting no more than a minute of screen time, if that. As most people are discussing, it's clear that Peridia has some connection to the gods of Mortis, to the father, the son, and the daughter. The Gods of Mortis are effectively the holy trinity of the Star Wars universe, though now it appears as though the Gods of Mortis don't even originate from the primary Star Wars galaxy, considering the massive statues that Balin is standing atop. One of the more interesting aspects of this reveal to me is that this implies that there is some sort of connection between the Night Sisters and Great Mothers and the Gods of Mortis. Some videos I have seen have discussed the possibility that the beacon Balin sees in the finale could be a gateway or portal to either the world between worlds or Mortis itself. I'm not entirely so sure of that myself, though I can get more on board with the theory that Balin is attempting to become the father figure of Mortis in an attempt to bring balance to the Force, as has appeared to be his goal all season, someone who could see the flaws in both the Sith and the Jedi, and wishes to end it all. I wonder if this could connect to Ahsoka being the apprentice of Anakin, and Ahsoka effectively being the embodiment of the light side of the Force. In the Mortis arc of the Clone Wars, the father attempts to have Anakin take his place to maintain balance between the son and daughter, and ultimately, the Force. Though Ahsoka and the daughter are ultimately fatally wounded and Anakin transfers the essence of the daughter into Ahsoka, and in the eyes of many, effectively making Ahsoka the new daughter, the new embodiment of the light side of the Force. If this is the case, then perhaps Balin will become the father and become an immortal celestial being, and perhaps Ahsoka and Shin will follow suit. To explain, in Legends, you know, all those cool stories Disney erased when they bought Star Wars, the gods or the ones of Mortis were still likely some sort of force-sensitive celestial race of beings, though they gained their incredible force powers in alignment and entanglement with a force through Force Nexuses on their home world. On their home world, or wherever they were at the time, there was a font, or fountain, of power, and a pool of knowledge. The son drank from the fountain of power, and the daughter bathed in the pool of knowledge, aligning them to the dark and light side of the Force, respectively. After seeing what had occurred, the father decided to drink from the fountain of power as well as bathe in the pool of knowledge, in an attempt to balance out the destructive capabilities and disputes between the siblings. The ones of Mortis were not born as we see them in the Clone Wars. Sure, they are still likely some sort of immensely powerful celestial beings, though why do we actually think that's the case? The only hint at the origins of the ones comes from legends, and as such we can't assume that everything will remain the same as it did in those stories. Dave Filoni, the head honcho behind shows like Star Wars Rebels and Ahsoka, has said before in an interview that if a character or concept exists within Legends, that he will do his best to adapt the Legends material and bring it into a canon, as it's material that many fans can recognize and resonate with, and thus why he decided to bring back Grand Admiral Thrawn, as opposed to creating some new villain that would make an attempt to prop the Galactic Empire back up. Speaking of Thrawn, so far Thrawn's presence in canon has not followed the exact details of Thrawn's Legends stories. However, they have followed several components and themes quite closely, which leads me to believe that the inclusion of the statues of the Ones on Peridia could be a hint that this planet houses the source of the Ones of Mortis's power. Though I don't entirely understand why that would be a power that is so great and terrible that the Night Sisters feel the need to run from it. If the beacon in the distance simply are the Force Nexuses of the Fountain of Power and Pool of Knowledge, are those things really so frightening in and of themselves that these black-eyed necromancers would be afraid of it? In my mind, the Force Nexuses could be terrifying if they are still connected in some way to the Mother, the Queen of the Stars, the Bringer of Chaos, Abeloth. If Abeloth is in fact imprisoned in or near the Force Nexuses, then it is reason to be fearful, as Abeloth's rage and despair in Legends completely deformed and corrupted the planet she was left on by the Ones which could parallel the desolate nature and prevalence of death on Peridia. After all, the Purgle literally voyaged to Peridia to die here, and the entire planet's atmosphere is littered with the carcasses of the Purgle. Clearly something about this planet is off. Moreover, I have seen and heard the beacon in the distance that Balin sees described as a starry beacon, 
which just brings Abeloth, the queen or mother of the stars, to my mind. Furthermore, in Legends, the Ones are not corrupted the way that Abeloth is by the Force Nexuses, because they were much more powerful, immortal beings. Though in canon they are not necessarily immortal, when considering the Ark in the Clone Wars, as the son and daughter's immortality is dependent upon the father. If the father dies, the son and daughter can die as well. Since the mother was different from the Ones, immersing herself in the Force Nexuses warped and corrupted her into a monstrosity, a chaotic being of the Force that eclipsed the power of the Ones. This is why I still believe that Abeloth could be what's hinted at in the Ahsoka finale, or that Balin himself will be adapted to be some form of Abeloth in canon, as he is certainly quite mortal, and interacting with the Force Nexuses could transform him into a horrifying entity. Though, it's also possible that the Legends material will be adapted so that the long-lived, or immortality component of the Ones is not in fact a necessary component to interact with the Fountain of Power and Pool of Knowledge, and that Balin will be able to drink from the fountain and bathe in the pool and become a true representation of a balanced Force being. This leads into my thoughts on Ahsoka and Shin, who may become the successors to the Daughter and Son. Remember, the Ones were not necessarily born as this holy trinity of Star Wars, but has more so been interpreted to be as such based on their abilities and connection to the Force, though there is nothing to suggest that there always has to be some sort of trinity with a father, son, and daughter. If Perdia does in fact house the Fountain of Power and Pool of Knowledge, then perhaps Ahsoka, who in many ways already is representative of the daughter, will bathe in the Pool of Knowledge and Shin will drink from the Fountain of Power and be the representation of the Sun, of the Dark Side. After all, while the Ones are immortal in Legends, that is not the case in canon, and I believe we will either come face to face with Abeloth, Balin will be adapted into some version of Abeloth, or perhaps Balin, Ahsoka, and Shin will take the place of the Ones Immortus. Ahsoka is clearly a representation of the Light Side, and Dave Filoni has said he envisioned Ahsoka as a Gandalf the White type character in this Ahsoka show. Shin is also clearly more drawn to the dark side of the Force, as is implied by Balin, and by her seemingly taking leadership over the bandits on Peridia. Balin has sought to be a character of balance, and this is hinted at by his orange lightsaber which seems to conveniently match the color of the beacon he sees, perhaps suggesting Balin will indeed take over the role of the father. I mean, after all, he's standing on top of the father statue at the end of the Ahsoka finale. This would also parallel the idea of the Trinity that the Ones Immortus represent, much like in Catholicism with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Which, speaking of religious or mythological connections, in Mesopotamian mythology as well as in Judaism and Christianity, Lilith is a female figure that was the first wife of Adam, and in many iterations was the primordial she-demon, and was banished from the Garden of Eden for not obeying Adam. And this parallels Abeloth, who went against the wishes of the Father and immersed herself in the Force Nexuses and became a very demonic entity and was abandoned by the Ones of Mortis. What I love about the idea that Ahsoka, Balin, and Shin could take over for the Ones is that it doesn't necessarily exclude the existence of Abeloth, as all three of these characters could become the Ones of Mortis and have to fight against Abeloth. An interesting factor is that Balin does not seem evil, and if it were to come to it, I absolutely think that Balin would align himself with Ahsoka to combat a force such as Abeloth. I also like this connection back to the Ones of Mortis, as Anakin Skywalker is supposedly the one to bring balance to the force, and perhaps part of how that is accomplished is through Ahsoka fully taking over the role that the daughter had as an emissary of the light side of the force and permanently sealing away Abeloth, solidifying their places as the new Ones or Gods of Mortis. Well, I think that might be enough for now, though I am soon going to explore more of the connections between Abeloth and Lilith, as well as explore more about the topic of Peridia, and primarily its connection to the Zepho, the Night Sisters, the Ones, and perhaps how all that could connect to an entity like Abeloth. After all, the Night Sisters were supposedly in some sort of dormant state prior to Thrawn's arrival, and clearly there is a reason they are fearful. Though, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know my ideas can seem a little far-fetched at times, but I gotta get them off my chest. I think that there's some interesting concepts at play here right now, and I really think that almost anyone's guess is as good as mine. So, at this point, I just want to see what you guys think. You can let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that Abeloth is coming? I know that some people are very hesitant, and they don't think that Abeloth is going to be a threat in the future, but I don't know. I think that they're hinting at it, guys. I think they're hinting at Abeloth. At the very least, I think that... 
there's going to be some sort of adaptation of the Abeloth story. I just, I really think that that's what they're hinting towards. That really seems to be where this is heading. I mean, come on, what else is Balin going after? You know, I mean, obviously there's some great, great source of power there. And if it is the Force Nexuses, why would everyone be so scared of it? You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so with that being said, hey, if you like this one, consider dropping a like on it. And if you like this one or my other videos, then hey, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it, and I'll see y'all in the next one.